Good morning. In a speech given in Chicago in 1899, two years before he became US president, then governor of New York, Teddy Roosevelt said, far better it is to dare mighty things, to win glorious triumphs, even though checkered by failure, than to take rank with those poor spirits who neither enjoy much nor suffer much, because they live in a grey twilight that knows not victory nor defeat. He speaks of the value of endeavour, of hard work and of embracing challenge. It is a timeless message, as true now as ever it was. We all need to dare mighty things, lest nothing of value happen at all. Some of you may know that this message was secretly embedded in the red and white markings on the parachute of the Perseverance Mars rover, footage of whose dramatic and incredible landing was released by NASA a couple of days ago. This was both an extraordinary triumph of engineering, of ingenuity, of technical leisure demain, but also of creativity, collaboration and humanity. Over the past year, we've had to think previously unthinkable things and adapt our lives in unforeseen ways. Soon, however, on March the 8th, we'll be able to return to school and crack on with our individual and collective adventures. This will bring a mixture of excitement and nervousness, both of which are completely understandable and fine, but we're well prepared and we're looking forward to it immensely. You will be aware that we'll need to conduct some lateral flow device tests, which, having done a few myself, I'm very happy to report are extremely straightforward and we'll say more about this in a little while. Those of you in years 11 and 13 will be aware of the announcement about GCSE and A-level grades. Though we say it all the time, this really does mean that everything you do matters. So please do continue to work hard to look after yourselves and each other and to make the most of every lesson, every activity and every day. I know that you can and that you will all dare mighty things yourselves and we will dare them together. Morning, Scott. Great to speak to you again, and obviously fantastic news this week about the return to school on Monday, the 8th of March. Now, you'll have just heard the headmaster talk about lateral flow testing for all students on our return to school. And we want to ensure that all students are able to come back for an 8.45 start on Monday, the 8th of March. So with that in mind, and your parents will have found out uh, last night from the headmaster, we are proposing to carry out lateral flow testing on Saturday, the 6th of March, and you'll be able to book a time to come into school, into the sports hall, uh, and take that test, which really does not take very long at all. We're going to send out a video next week talking you through the whole process and showing you what will happen. So just to put everybody's mind at rest, it really means that the school environment and the school community is then kept as safe as they possibly can. So more details will be out in the school bulletin this afternoon and we will return with a very similar timetable to what we had in the autumn term. So please keep an eye out next week for the link to book your LFT test appointment and also the video to talk you through everything. We're looking forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you. Good morning, school, and uh, I hope this finds you. Uh, I hope this finds you well. Well, as I look out my window, uh, the sun is shining, uh, and it does seem, as promised, there are brighter, lighter, warmer days to come. So we're very, very hopeful and looking forward to seeing you back at school on the week beginning uh, the 8th of March. Um, I just want to take a moment just to actually say thank you. Uh, if you cast your minds back before half term, we had this uh, idea of a, a why don't you Wednesday where we took some time off school and uh, the intention was to get you doing things, maybe doing things that you wouldn't normally do to get away from the uh, to get away from the screens uh, and maybe read or create something or paint something or cook something. Um, so we took you off off lessons for the afternoon and we thought well how's this going to work and I have to say I'm so impressed uh, because what I ended up with was loads and loads of emails from tutors and some some individuals showing me what you'd done and you'd been really really busy what I'm really really proud of and really pleased about is the fact that you didn't just slouch on your sofas in front of Netflix actually you got creative and what we've seen is a whole a whole host of of cakes of cookies of meals being cooked of uh, 
of artwork being created, of people doing videos and playing music and uh, getting out in the fresh air and really, really taking part. And so I, I just want to actually thank you and, and pay testament to those of you uh, who got involved and really bought into the spirit of that. And I think it says a, a huge amount about you. So well done and thank you um, ever so much. Now, if you remember, I did also, as part of that, talk to you about our power lap times, uh, a little bit of a competition where we'd asked people to send in their best five kilometer time uh, to get out and using your, your Garmin or your, your Strava or whatever it is to record your best time for five kilometers. And if you recall, we had Mr. McEwen leading the way with a tremendous uh, 19 minutes 47 seconds for five kilometers mr rad 21 minutes 32 and so on a, a really fantastic selection of times and obviously this got some of your competitive juices going uh, so i just want to highlight a, a couple of the submissions that we've had i would like more of you to get involved if you get the opportunity and the sun is shining to get out and have a run uh, send me your best times and i'll add you to the leaderboard be nice to see where we come in uh, I want to flag one of them, uh, and that is young Jeremy in year 10, who put in an outstanding pace of 19 minutes, 15 seconds. He was up and down, lit in front like a whippet. Um, and of course, this, this would actually be the, the, the top of the leaderboard. He's quicker than Mr. McEwen, but he's actually just a little bit short. Four kilometers point nine three. He's uh, 70 meters short, so it doesn't quite count. So, Jeremy, we want to see your uh, your time. We actually sort out your uh, sort out your distance. We want to see your time because uh, we think you could be top of the uh, top of the leaderboard. Uh, who can uh, who can match that or even beat that? But now I hear you ask, what about Mr. Wormsley? Um, a director of PE. What could Mr. Wormsley do? Because Mr. Wormsley, we all know, is a very, very competitive soul. He's a he's a sportsman. He's very, very competitive. And in fact, when I put that leaderboard out, he came to me and said, Mr. Hayden, I can't believe I've got to submit my time. I reckon I can beat Mr. McEwen's time. I said, well, talk is cheap, Mr. Wormsley. Let's see what you can do. So he got on his running gear and then up and down living front. He went, his legs, get his little legs going 20 to the dozen. Could he beat Mr. McEwen's time? Well, Mr. Wormsley, I'm pleased to announce that your time was 19 minutes and 48 seconds. He is one second slower than Mr. McEwen over that five kilometers. So there's uh, just a little bit more to go. So we'd love to see some more uh, some more scores uh, come in. Uh, you'll notice some others have changed. There's some more personal bests come through. So well done. As I say, well done to everyone who's been involved. Uh, it was fabulous that you all got uh, you all got uh, you took part in that so well. So I'm really really proud of you and hope to see you at school uh, on the eighth. Stay safe. See you soon.